what's going on. Let me get live on here. We're starting this. What's going on? This is Marcus Martinez, and this is your Monday kettlebell workout. So we're going to be focusing on some upper body lifts. So I'm going to give you a couple things here. We're going to go through some technique. We're going to slow things down, make sure you're doing things properly. And then, of course, as always, if you have any questions, I'll go through those and we'll go through it. And then this will be saved on here with the reps and the sets and everything. And as always, my goal with my kettlebell workouts is to make sure that I'm moving towards whatever goal that is for myself and for my clients and to enhance the experience, to make it enjoyable, to not just mindlessly throw a bunch of reps at you, but to be creative, not to the point of gimmicky or novelty just for the sake of novelty, but to give you some stuff that's going to be useful and help you look at the kettlebell in a slightly different way. So of course we're going to perform basics. Of course there's times for cleans and presses and snatches and all the basic stuff, but there's also a little bit of a time for some fun and for some variety. So today we're going to go through a few different exercises, four different exercises to be exact, and we are going to go through them with reps. So again, everything will be saved on here. So if you're in the middle of your breakfast burrito, you don't feel like lifting right now, it's all good. This come back to this. So we'll start off with a quick warm up. And then we will go into the workout. So the workout is going to, uh, we're going to have a hang clean press with a controlled negative. We're going to have a staggered one on row. We're going to have some alternating halos and we're going to have some pull through. So we're going to have some groundwork, we're going to have some shoulders, some upper body. And of course, there's going to be a little bit of lower body. We're not seated the entire time. So, all right. So for this warm up, we're going to do four things. We're going to start off with corkscrews. But I want you to pivot and get as much rotation through your upper body as possible. So arms out. Imagine you're trying to touch both sides of the room. I'm going to internally rotate with one arm, externally with the other arm, and I'm going to try to create tension through my upper back. So I feel that through my lats. I'm going to pivot through that back leg. So I'm getting some rotation through the hips. And then as I get to that top position, I want to open up, try to open up as much as I can, and then come right back down. So I am very much about quality over quantity. Rather than just mindlessly going through this for a minute, I want you to try to get as much from it as possible. And that's good enough. All right, we're gonna go to shoulder rolls. Same idea, be as intentional as possible. So I'm gonna stand up nice and tall. Imagine there's a rope pulling me to the ceiling. I'm gonna bring my shoulders forward, round. I'm gonna lift my shoulders. I'm gonna pull back. As I'm doing that, I'm gonna open up my arms as well and then close back up. So I'm doing as big shoulder rolls as possible. So rather than just like, right, let's go. I want you to be intentional here. Pull back. Oh. We're just going to do about three to five reps per direction. And other way. Oh, this feels good. Getting little cracks. Getting little creaks. And relax. All right, let's work on some elbows, which is always fun to do in the gym because people are like, what the hell is this guy doing? So pull your shoulders back, rotate. I'm gonna bend the elbows, rotate and extend. Bend, extend. I'm just going through a few ranges of motion and then we can repeat or reverse it. So pull up with my hands facing down and then extend with my hands facing up. And last one, just some wrist rolls. So nice little wrist rolls, some axe murderers, just a nice sweet name for some Wrist rolls go in both directions. It's very important. Wrists and elbows. That is such an overlooked uh, piece of the warm up. But when you're doing a lot of kettlebell work, especially if you're new and there's a lot of elbow flexion, there's a lot of cleans, there's a lot of rack positions, just holds, there's a lot of down or a lot of down swings done in a ballistic way. So you have to really keep be mindful of your wrists and elbows because otherwise you're going to get a tennis elbow. I should just call it kettlebell elbow at this point because. Everybody that I have ever worked with has at some point said, oh, um, when I was doing kettlebells in the past, it hurt my elbows. A lot to it, there's obviously a technique issue, but there's also just an overuse. If you're doing too much of something, you are going to create an overuse injury. So we might as well use as good a technique as possible. All right, we're going through this warm-up one more time. Shoulder rolls. Back and forth, so we're going through the corkscrews into the shoulder rolls. And you can alternate these. I really like doing this because then you get a little bit more thoracic engagement. Uh, and you just feel so, feel so ready for the kettlebell workout. All right, rolls both directions. And elbows so you can go a little bit faster. 
when I was shooting videos uh, with this company, we would do, I would do a wrist or an elbow warm up, and the videographer always laughed because he was like, what's that kind of weird dance move are you doing? Like, listen, I don't dance, and I was a parent right there. So all it is is just trying to warm up my elbows. And act murders, wrist circles back and forth, and then we'll get started. All right. So first one we're going to do, I'll walk you through it, and then we're going to go through it at the same time, actually. So don't need to say anything. We're going from the hang clean, so we're going to get a little bit of lower body engagement. You're not going to be completely upright as you do this. Slight hip hinge, pull. You're going to perform press. As you come down, I want you to control that negative, and then as you get into that bottom position, you're going to use a light enough weight that you're going to be able to control that downswing. So you're not going to actually swing the bell. So what's it going to look like? Starting from the same position, you're going to hang clean. So as little lower body engagement as possible. Perform the press, control that negative, and then right here, I'm going to slide my elbow back and control that uh, down position. So we're getting some biceps, some shoulders, some upper back, and some forearms. So that's why I want you to use as light a weight as you need for that position. So that means if you're going to use something really light for this control negative, then I want you to absolutely perform a controlled negative for that press as well. And down. One more time. Control, control, control. And oh, down. Oh, and what you'll find with that is number one, it's I thoroughly enjoy it. It's very fun. But your grip is going to get just absolutely crushed because you have to combine that loose grip from the clean and then nothing but tension from there on out until you're done, until they get the next rep. You're gonna create a lot of core tension here. So you're gonna feel this throughout your abs, throughout your lats, throughout your glutes. Ugh. And the slower you go on that negative, the more challenging it's gonna be. So we're on five reps here. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Oh. One more time. Ugh. And down. Oh, so that's exercise number one. I really enjoy that one. That one's a fun one. All right, next one we're gonna do, we're gonna do a staggered one arm row. We're not gonna add a lot of rotation on this, so I want you to fight that rotation. Stay, oops, here we, stay in this staggered position, and then you're gonna get a little bit of movement through your upper torso, through your torso, but try not to move too much. So from this position right here, stagger it, pull that shoulder down. And as you pull up, try to bring your elbow back towards your hip. Squeeze for a second. Control on the way down. Squeeze. Control. About eight reps. Four. Five. Squeeze. I want you to freaking, I want your lat to cramp as you're doing this. And as you come down, allow your shoulder to rotate. So allow your scapula to rotate. Don't be so, especially when you're doing controlled movements, don't be so worried about locking everything into place. When we're doing ballistic exercises, absolutely want to keep that tension, that shoulder pack. But when we're doing controlled movements like rows, it's absolutely okay to allow the scapula to move a little bit more freely. We just don't want to let it drop down explosively. So let it come down, extend or reach a little bit farther, and then pull back up. So on the other side, pull up, squeeze. On that way down, allow it to come out a little bit. You're not letting your shoulder out of your socket, and you're definitely not doing it with any kind of speed. Squeeze. And I like to add that rotation as I come up. Just allows me to feel that through the lat a little bit more. Squeeze. And keep your abs tight the entire time you're doing this. Oh. All right. So, starting with the clean and press, or the hand clean press with that control negative into the one arm rows. Next, one we're going to do, we're going to do some halos, and I know we just halos. So, we're going to treat this a little bit more similarly like a, a club or a mace. So, we're going to add a little bit of momentum. So, my first thing I would say is use something really light. Don't use something heavy at all right now uh, because we're going to use a little bit of momentum. And we're going to use a little bit of rotation through the upper body. So typically with the halo, we're going to go upside down. And you go control, control, control. And I'm a huge proponent 
controlled halos until you understand your shoulder mobility. From there, we're gonna add a little bit of speed. So as I come around, I'm going to allow a little bit of a dip and then right back to the chest, a dip and back to my chest. So from here, I'm getting a little bit of more, a little more momentum here. And I'm really feeling that through my lats, my upper back, my shoulders, but make sure that you have the requisite mobility. Because if you don't, then I want you to slow it down and control the movement. If that feels good, add a little bit of speed because then that's gonna allow you to go a little bit heavier. So at that top position, I want you to get as deep into that elbow flexion as you can. Come right back around. And we're going just 10 reps here. Oh. Oh. So I love halos. Halos are one of my favorite exercises. But if you are new to clubs and maces and any kind of really a lot of that opening of the shoulders, especially in a more ballistic way, be very careful with it because you can definitely overstrain those joints. But man, that has done wonders for my posture and for my shoulder mobility, just adding in club 360s, mace 360s, uh, kettlebell halos with a little bit more speed, a little bit more bounce, just a phenomenal exercise. Just be extremely careful with that. All right, last one we're gonna do, we're gonna do a kettlebell pull through, and we're gonna go super control. So what I don't want you to do is just slide it back and forth and use a bunch of momentum. I want you to get into that quadruped position. So we'll start with the bell on the outside of the left arm. And I'm gonna slowly either drag it or lift it. If you can't drag it, if you've got wood floors and you don't have a top, then just lift it, pull across, control. Try to avoid as much rotation as possible. Ah. So if I drag it, great. As I'm doing that, I'm control, control, control the entire time. So I'm feeling this through my abs, definitely feeling this through my shoulders, my chest. Triceps back, a little bit of quads in there, snuck in some lower body work in there for you. Ah, we're going 10 reps total, or sorry, 20 reps total, 10 per side. Ah, this is why I always use a timer, because I've already lost track. Uh, 19 and 1,000. Right. Oh my goodness. So that is, those are the exercises, we'll go through it. A little less talk, not a lot less talking, but a little less talking. Uh, but what you'll find with this workout, these four exercises, we're just getting a nice, well-rounded workout. We're getting some shoulders, we're getting some upper traps, we're getting some upper back, we're getting some biceps indirectly from those rows, we're getting the lats, we're getting mobility, we're getting some strength, we're getting some power, some explosiveness, so a lot of pieces into these exercises. So if you are Want to just randomly do workouts, just be mindful of the exercises that you select. Um, but ideally, work from a plan so that way you can actually see growth, you can actually see the benefits or feel the benefits in terms of your workout. All right, back into the hang clean. A little bit here on this one now. So, a little hang clean right into the press, control that descent, and then control all the way down. Woo! One, control, control, control. Pull that elbow back. Two, and three, right down, control, four, one more, and oh, yeah, that is, I think that was four, that's fine, that's fine. That negative on that, it's like anti-everything I've ever done with kettlebell clean. So it's like, be fast, don't be controlled, don't be controlled. Well, every now and then, I like to mix things up. But what you'll find when you're in this position right here, number one, make sure you have that elbow health, that you feel good doing it, but create full body tension from the ground up. Don't just create tension with your grip. I want you to create tension throughout the entire Body, right into the other side. Control, control, control. Ah, one, two. As little hinge as possible. 
Use something light on that one. When it comes to the clean, make sure you understand the mechanics. This is not how, if you're just tuning in, you're like, what the hell? That's not how you do a chem. I know. We're doing a controlled negative. We're focusing on some upper body on that. But when you go a little bit heavier and you have that negative, your grip, your forearm, your biceps, your shoulder, your upper back, your abs, your glutes, everything is firing as you're doing that. So it is just a very fun and engaging uh Variation, not something that you need to do a lot of, but you can splice it in. Again, that's my goal is to show you different ways to do to use a kettlebell. All right, right in the rows, squeeze, and then control. Get that full extension. Three, four, five. Try not to rotate too much on this, but as you extend this arm forward, it's okay to do a little bit. Just keep that tension through your abs. Ah. So, common question that people ask is how do you uh, progress with the weight? If you don't have a rack of weights, how can you progress with kettlebells? So, a couple things that you can easily do. Number one, just vary the tempo. Slow down the negative, add in some isometric holds. It's a great way to add some more engagement to those exercises. And that also includes the other direction, adding more speed. You can do something with more speed, like a hard style swing, where you're focusing on the downswing just as explosively as the upswing. Uh, same thing as a snatch. I love performing speed snatches, where I'm pulling the weight down as explosively as I'm pulling the weight up. All right, all right the rows. Squeeze, add that rotation. Pull, squeeze. <sighs> The next neutral neck position, abs engaged. Don't forget that. Squeeze. Uh, new drinking games. Take a shot for every time I say the word squeeze. All right, so that was exercise number three. My left hand is a bit weaker than my right hand. I try to repeat that and control the kind of what seems to be difficult. So I like to match the reps to the weaker arm. Um, so if I can do 10 reps on one side, I'll do 10 reps on the other side typically. Um, I try not to create more of a divide. So if I'm going, you know, 15 reps on one side, or if I, if possible, just try to use the weights that will challenge you within that rep range. But it's pretty normal to have one side that's a little bit stronger or weaker than the other. Um, I would also just add on one more set whenever you do uh, unilateral exercises. Add on one more set um, on the uh, weaker side. So that way that just eventually will get a little bit more volume. All right, halo is definitely not going halo or heavier with that one. It'll be a little bit more bouncy, a little have a little bit more lateral flexion as I do this, and just try to get a little bit more mobility through the shoulders. All right, so notice how I'm getting a little bounce through the quads. I'm dipping slightly as I do this, trying to get that kettlebell down behind me as low as I can. So again, if you're familiar with clubs or maces, that's kind of what we're going for here. If you're not, slow it down first. Make sure you have that mobility in the shoulders, that stability, and then you can go for it. Woo! And, oh my goodness. I freaking love that exercise. I love that exercise. Again, make sure that you have the mobility to do it. Don't just start mindlessly Bring your arms around with the kettlebell or with the mace or club. Make sure you have the mobility for that. But once you have it, oh, you know, you don't ever want to lose it. You're like, oh, stay with me, stay with me, baby. <clears throat> I used to use clubs and maces all the time. So back in my gym, I had, a, I had a, hunt, a bunch of clubs, a bunch of maces. This is like 2008, 2009. So I really knew them. I loved them. I was using them all the time. Felt great. Grip strength, everything felt great. And then just kind of fell away from them. And then just recently started getting back into them. And it's like, oh, it's almost like that feeling of when I first started the kettlebells, where it just felt so good. 
so unique. All right, back to pull throughs. Control it. So even if you have to add a little bit more, so you're using something a little bit heavier, still try to control that drag or that pull. Try not to shift your hips too much. So what I don't want you doing is just moving side to side. It's going to kind of negate the purpose here. I want you to focus on that stability of the planted shoulder uh, or back of your pulling shoulder, grip, and of course, some core. Uh, almost there. And ah, time. Oh, I'm getting a little sweaty and I wasn't meaning to. So if you're using appropriate weights, it's going to be challenging. Use a little bit more time within or between the, uh, the sets so that you can use as heavy weights as possible. If you want to turn this into more conditioning, just decrease the time and try to get through a little bit faster. All right. Rest up for a second. I got one more round and then we're good with that. So I typically don't like to do tons and tons of sets. I find that if I'm concentrated on the exercises that I'm working on, being intentional, being progressive with them, overloading them progressively, is what I mean, uh, then I, tend, I don't need a ton of reps, a ton of sets. I'm all for the occasional EMOM or AMRAP, but I find them a little bit too mindless. I just think that it ends up being a lot of junk volume. So nothing against people that use them. I use them every now and then. I don't rely on them. I'd rather rely on exercise selection, rep selection, intensity, and uh, progressive overload. All right, let's go back into the last set. Hand clean, press, controlled negative, slight hinge. So again, use as little, it's gonna, you're gonna have to be a little uh, selective with your weight here, because I want you to use as a little bit of a hinge with that uh, hanging position, and as much control with that negative as you can. Control that negative on the press. And in order to manipulate this or vary it, you might need to do a little bit more of a hang. You might need to do a push press or a jerk. You might not be able to do as much. You might need to do a controlled or a two hand uh, controlled negative. So just make sure it works for you. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Last one, I think. Pull down. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Ah! Oh my gosh, and even with a moderately lightweight, that's gonna be pretty challenging. Whew. When you're doing overhead work, make sure, again, we talk about having those prerequisites in place. Make sure you have the mobility so you're not the person pressing and leaning back or leaning to the side because you don't have that shoulder mobility. So make sure work within your abilities with the weights that you're choosing. So you don't crush yourself in the process. It's a, it's a lifelong game. Instagram is making this like you have to compete with people and you have to be at a certain level faster. At that noise. This is your path, whatever you've got to take, however long it takes you. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. All right. All right, let's focus on what I'm doing now. All right, hang clean. Right into that press. Control negative, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Oh, that's three shots. Right into it again. And even when you're doing that hang clean, don't forget uh, to keep your abs tight, keep your glutes tight, pull up vertically, jump as it, or uh, pretend like you're jumping without actually leaving the ground. Uh, four. Uh, and five. I found that this was just, again, a fun way Challenge form, challenge grip, challenge my elbow, challenge my biceps, oh, and just intensify some lighter weights. So if you only have a few different weights, and you don't want to just keep adding more and more volume. Same thing with calisthenics. Once you get to a point, you don't want to be sitting there like Mike Tyson in prison doing hundreds of hundreds of push-ups. Sometimes you need to change the variable, vary the exercise, so you can make it a little bit more engaging, a little bit more challenging. All right, one of those. In that stagger position, I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna squeeze, and up. So again, control that negative and let that arm extend. Let that scapula move. You're going to feel really good 
as you increase that strength and mobility of your upper back and how freely your step can move. Don't lock everything out all the time. And sight. Squeeze. Oh, my leg just cramped so bad. Oh, oh, oh that felt good. So you're doing it right when you can engage the musculature. It's not just about the weight. It's not just about lift, 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 go as heavy as you can. It's about feeling the movement. I don't know why I did that shadow of a little thing right there. You gotta feel the movement. All right, other side. Pull up, squeeze. Nice proud chest. I didn't want to just touch my boot there. It was reminding me to open up at that top position. Match your breath to the movement. <coughs> Up, make sure that you're pulling up, keeping that forearm vertical. Common mistake I see with people rowing is they just pull up vertically. Make sure you're pulling up and back. Like you're pulling your elbow up into your back pocket. All right. Right into the ballistic halos. A little more explosive on this one. If you're doing the workout or if you've done this workout, we're in the future and you're watching this and it's recorded. Let me know what your favorite exercise was. If you did the workout as described, let me know if you did it. I love hearing that. All right, ready. So if you're just tuning in, we're doing halos with a little bit more of a bounce akin to clubs and maces, but we're just adding a little bit of a bounce to a little more speed, not a lot, and still going relatively light. That's all about, look at that, give you that profile. It's all about driving your elbows back and down. So see that arc that the kettlebell takes as it comes around, that pendulum. Oh, oh my goodness. Ah, you find your grip? Just sits this gnarly freaking burn as you're doing that. Your wrist, and that's one of the things I really love about kettlebells. Change up the variables there. Doing bottoms up work, doing some leverage work where you can strengthen your wrist through all positions. Uh, it's not just about keep your wrist straight. Like, no, your wrist moves in a lot of different positions. So let's get strong. Let's get strong. That seems like a hashtag. All right, right into the pull-throughs, controlled. Ah, breathe, squeeze. Ah, and if you have like a slider or a towel and you don't want to drag the kettlebell across your floor and get your parents or significant other or neighbor below you pissed off, then you can use that, otherwise, Drag that thing ah, across. You can slow down a little more. If you want a little bit more engagement, lift up that opposite leg. Ah, that's no longer just on the body. Now I'm getting a lot of core and balance. Ah, ah, oh my gosh. I'm totally lost count. 19. And 20. Oh my god. Oh. For me, like, I like doing some variations of plank, but planks are so damn boring. So I want to vary those, add a little more dynamic twist to it to make it a little more challenging. So, all right. That was the king. You're ready, bro. I like that. Sorry, right. that was a late, late response to that. All right. So hopefully you got something from that. Just making sure there was no questions. You know, hey, IG, if you're listening, you know, make it easier to, like, scroll through and get questions. That would be awesome rather than having to sit here like an idiot with my face up to the camera trying to get that. All right. So let's talk a little bit about reps and sets here. So we did the whole thing. Said reps and sets at the beginning, but just to reiterate. So for the hang, clean, and press, there's five reps per side. Ideally, use a weight that's going to challenge you so you can rest one, two, even three minutes so you can come to that next exercise fresh. A big uh, 
misconception is something I did for a very long time. And I still do occasionally, but what I've kind of changed in my training is just adding more rest, even when doing circuits. So if the circuit's intention is for cardiovascular health and trying to get a sweat going, of course, decrease that. But for the most part, most people are still, even if they're doing circuits, they still want to build some strength. They still want to build a little muscle. So it's okay to increase the rest periods so you can maximally focus on the exercise that you're doing. So that way it's not always a cardio burn. Let's, let's change the narrative on kettlebell training where it's like, yo, it's just cardio. That's just, you just do a bunch of swings. You do a bunch of cleans. You do a bunch, it's like, no, you can still build strength. I got a kettlebell king's 200 pound kettlebell. You that's not, you don't have to be strong to do that. I mean, look at the people on Instagram, kettlebell king's doing this stuff. Freaking uh, so many, I can't even name them, but Keanu and uh, Colin and Venus and, there's some awesome coaches out there looking at some heavy ass weight. So it's not always about cardio burn. Uh, if you're pro EMOMs and AMREPs, that's fantastic. Make sure that you're still using heavy enough weights and it's not just mindless accumulation of volume. So it's not just, how do I get my 100 reps, my 200 reps? Like, nobody gives a shit. I'd rather focus on less, be really intense with that, get stronger, be more fluid with my strength, be more controlled with my strength, and then keep going up and up. And then I can use those lighter kettlebells for some flow or for those, you know, cardio imams. Um, anyway, so all that to say, rest a little bit longer between the sets. Of course, if you only have lighter weights and you've got to move a little bit faster, then that's what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. But ideally rest one to three minutes between even the sets. And I still like to do them at circuits because that means by the time I get to that first exercise, Seven minutes has passed. I am completely fresh. I'm ready to go. I can most likely put more intention. I can most likely use heavier weights. So we go through that. I'm only going to go through three times. I typically don't do more than three sets of uh, even my circuits. I find that much more than that, I'm probably not putting everything into those first few sets. So I very much try to live by the mantra less is more. How can I do less? And that doesn't necessarily mean minimalist style where I'm only doing a couple exercises but just less sets, less reps, less workouts. If I don't have to work out every day, fantastic. If I like to, if you're one of those people that like to work out every day, just make sure that you are using enough intensity, enough balance in your training so that you're not overdoing it. But uh, yeah, with that said, try to do that minimum dose, minimum effective dose, I think it's the term, uh, to get you where you're trying to go. So that way you just don't focus on trying to do more. I've gone through my stages in life where it was like more, 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 more. I gotta do more. I gotta get a certain weight. I gotta do a certain number of reps. And all that did was led to injury. So listen to your body, be the expert on you. You are your own mad scientist and experiment. So make sure that no matter what program you're doing, no matter what live here you're doing, you're always focusing on how you're feeling, how your body's reacting to the workout, how you are in terms of your mobility, your capability, so that you don't push beyond what you're capable of. And like I said, social media is a great place, lots of great exercises and workouts and coaches, but don't compare yourself to where other people are on their training journey, physique journey, whatever it is, because the best thing you can do is just be grateful where you are, be proud of the progress you've made, even if it's just so little, it doesn't matter. Be proud of that. This is a lifelong journey, enjoy the process. That's my inspirational rant, because I don't know, I felt it, it was the coffee. It was all the caffeine. Anyway, all right, I'll save this on here. If you have any questions, slide in my DM, slide in Kettle King's DM, and we will see you all on the next workout. Wish I had two hands so I can stop both at the same time.